So you might be asking what's so important about being able to look up and think about these different bond enthalpies. And the reason that it's important is because if you're looking at a reaction, no matter how complicated that reaction is, you can actually figure out what the enthalpy of the entire reaction is by adding up all the individual mean bond enthalpies of the products and all the individual mean bond enthalpies of the reactants and thinking about the difference between those two. So we'll do that in just a second. And the reaction that we'll do it with is the oxidation of glucose here. So C6H12O6, one mole of glucose plus six moles of oxygen gives us six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. So what we can find out, and hopefully what we will match up when we look at using the different bond enthalpies, is that the enthalpy of this entire reaction is negative 2816 kilojoules per mole. So in this case, we're saying that delta H is negative. Does anyone know what it's called when delta H is negative? Everyone knows. Great. So it's exothermic. This is an exothermic reaction. The reaction releases heat. So I just want to mention before we go on, if you look at almost any uh, freshman chemistry textbook, what you'll find is this oxidation of glucose reaction is used a lot in talk talking about thermochemistry. And one reason it's talked about is because it's very convenient to talk about something where we start with one mole of glucose and end up with 12 moles of products. That's going to be helpful when we're doing a practice problem to see exactly how you deal with it when there's different numbers of moles. Uh, but the other reason you always see this reaction is because it's an incredibly important reaction. The oxidation of glucose is going on all the time in our body. This is our main source of energy for all animals. So let's think a little bit about why this reaction is so important and so prevalent. It turns out that if we're talking about plants, plants do the reverse reaction. So plants take carbon dioxide and water, and they turn it into glucose, or energy for us, energy stored in the bonds of glu glucose, plus oxygen. So if we do the reverse reaction, this is actually going to require energy. Where do plants get this energy? Yeah, this is just photosynthesis here. This is the photosynthesis where plants are turning carbon dioxide and water into sugar and into oxygen. So what happens when we eat the plants or when we eat animals that have eaten the plants is that we perform the reverse reaction now, which is what I just showed you, the oxidation of glucose. And even though it's not the products of the reaction that are particularly valuable to us, we just breathe out the CO2, and actually we'd rather have less of that uh, than more in our, in our environment. But um, what's important here is instead the energy or the enthalpy that's given off in this reaction. So as I said, this reaction has a negative enthalpy of 2816 kilojoules per mole. That's a lot of enthalpy and a lot of energy. So we actually end up using that energy to fuel most of what is going on in our body. So instead of storing it as sugar, once we oxidize the sugar, now we just store it as ATP. And as you know, ATP is the currency of energy in the cells. So this is why you see this reaction again and again and again in just about any chemistry textbook that you open up as sort of a general reaction. The reason it's used is it's just so important and so prevalent in terms of uh, thinking about our bodies and, and how we're staying alive and using energy. All right, so let's go ahead and use this as an example of what we just said, which is using the bond enthalpies of the products and the reactants to figure out the enthalpy of the entire reaction. So the way that we do this is we add up all of the individual mean bond enthalpies of the reactants, and we subtract from that all of the individual bond enthalpies of the products. So we can think about what this will tell us. If you think about the fact if the bonds are stronger in the products than they were in the reactants, you can go ahead and click in and tell me if you think we'll have a negative or a positive delta H here. All right, so let's take 10 more seconds on this. OK, great. So um, negative is correct. And some people, well, OK, some people got totally mixed up, didn't just get one thing wrong. So let's just focus on the right answer to start with. Um, 
The correct answer is that it's negative. It's an exothermic reaction. Uh, and actually, let's switch to our class notes to explain why. And also, this was the quiz question for today. So whether you got the answer correct or incorrect, you get full quiz points if you did, in fact, answer. But let's still focus on the right answer here and see why it's correct. So if we're talking about the bonds being stronger in the products, that basically means that we ended up releasing a lot of heat when we made those bonds in the products. And we didn't have to use up too much of that heat to break all the bonds in the reactants. So that's why we say that delta H is going to be negative. You could also just do it um, not conceptually, just plugging it into the equation. But it's better to kind of understand exactly why that is. It's because it takes more energy. You gain more energy forming the products than you take breaking up the reactants. So if we have the opposite case here, if the bonds are stronger in the reactants, now what we're going to find is that the delta H of the reaction is positive, and what you're dealing with is an endothermic reaction. So let's go ahead and do this with our example of the oxidation of glucose. So uh, I've just written out the glucose molecule so you can see all of its individual bonds here, since we're going to be using that information. So let's start by talking about the bonds that are broken in terms of uh, thinking about all of the reactants here. So if we're talking about the sugar molecule itself, what we have is we have seven CH bonds. And if we add up all the OH bonds, we have five of those. How many CO single bonds do we have? What do people think? Five. Yes, five CO single bonds. What about CC single bonds? Five of those as well. CO double bonds? Just one CO double bond. And then we have our oxygen molecule to worry about, and we have six OO double bonds. So if we add up all of the bonds are broken, and we subtract from that the bonds that are formed, those strengths, the C double bond uh, O, we have 12 of those. And how many OH bonds do we have? Right, 12 as well. So if we add up all the bonds broken, what we end up with is uh, 12,452 kilojoules per mole. And it's talking about per mole of glucose that's oxidized. And in terms of bonds formed, what we see is 15,192 kilojoules per mole. So all we need to do to figure out the um, change in enthalpy, and when it has this subscript R here, I meant to mention that means the enthalpy for the reaction. We just subtract the, the, uh, the, these bonds here from the ones that we ended up forming. Um, so basically what we're saying, excuse me, the ones these are the ones that we broke. It's 12,452 minus 15,192, which we formed. So we end up with an enthalpy of reaction of negative 2,740 kilojoules per mole of glucose that's oxidized. All right, so if you remember the number that I told you before, it doesn't exactly match up with what we uh, had said is the exact number. The exact number is 2,816. It is within 3%, though. That's pretty good. Because remember, we're not using exact bond enthalpies here. What we were using is average bond enthalpies. So it makes sense that we're going to be a little bit off. Um, but if, you, if all you have in front of you is the information on bond enthalpies, mean bond enthalpies, this is a great way to figure out the enthalpy of an overall reaction.